good evening and thank you guys for joining us today yeah we're really delighted uh please can you introduce yourselves yeah hey, Nicola Kukuti is my name okay and you my dear Kuti nice I am I am Femi Kuti so okay and we are Bella Kuti's offspring <laughs> okay so first question is uh, to you Madi so growing up has it always been music for you or did you feel the pressure to carry on the family name uh, it's always been music for me because I've been doing what I'm doing now, which is, you know, following my dad on tour, watching him play at the shrine, being a part of his band, picking up different musical instruments from him and people in the positive force. So I've been, because I've been so surrounded by such, you know, incredible music and musicians, any child that you know, absorbs good things would naturally navigate towards that, you know, particular thing. So I was surrounded by good music, so I wanted to learn how to do it, and I wanted to do it myself. That's how it okay, that's that's nice to know. Thank you. And uh, to you, sir, um, I would like to know how your typical like recording process starts, or how does it happen? Does it start with the melodies, or you think about the lyrics first? Yeah. Start with the melody. Most ninety percent, ninety nine percent. Time is the melody. The best ones are when I dream about them. If I can wake up for time to get the sound, or oh, whilst I'm practicing, then I store it down in my mind or on my phone. I take it to rehearsals. The band rehearses it. We play it for about two, three years. Then we go into the studio. Wow. I like to play it for some time. So because the longer you play, it's like a tree. It's you find new ideas. You it changes several right. times and then even most of the songs I've recorded while if we do play them it changes over the years it has changed in 10 years the sound that was recorded 10 years ago if I play today because you, it, it's going to remain stagnant it's, it's very boring for me mm -hmm. okay that's it's clear I dreamt a very good idea yesterday I don't remember <laughs> the music yeah and it was, it was really cool and that's then cool. I woke up Forgot it. No, I was so tired. I went back to sleep. <laughs> 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 well, I, 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 I can be, trying to remember. That, that can, can be very painful. Those are painful moments when you lose them. Yeah, true, true. Okay, Madi. Uh, so uh, your album, it was really amazing. And to note that you played all music instruments on the album, that's really sick. And yeah like thinking about it so how was the process like how long did it take it took to prepare first writing the music was about writing and rehearsing everything at the same time it took about seven eight months i think and then recording took 16 days for recording the drums bass guitar horn section percussion and keys and all the solos and then I did backing vocals when I traveled back to Lagos. Yeah. I did most of the recording in the, the studio where we use in France, Studio Zama. Okay. So yeah, it took... Recording didn't take that much time. It was the preparation to the recording itself. Okay, was there some point where it was kind of overwhelming for you, where you like needed some motivation to push forward? It was overwhelming, not for me, I think more for the people that were around me. Because they couldn't understand why I was practicing for 13, 14 hours every day. But honestly, <laughs> I think when, if you choose to, when I reflect on what I did, I know that I'm never going to do it again. Because it was really a one time thing. And I realized that I put everything aside to be able to do it. And what I realized is when you try to put that much effort into something, you really need people that are able to motivate you around you rather than cause. And I was lucky, unfortunately, it ended one relationship for me, but my family you know, were there for me as I went through it. So it was, to me, everything about the album was successful. I would say it's unfortunate. Who's not supposed to be there? It's not supposed to be there. So yeah, man, life moves on. on. Yeah, exactly. As they say, we move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I found a new beautiful relationship. So, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, we know about it. We know. Yeah, we know. About it. <laughs> we know. We know. We love you guys. How <laughs> would you say it's unfortunate? It's unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Okay, uh, to you, sir. So I would like to know what instrument do you connect with the most, or do you feel helps you to pass your message the most? Still the saxophone. Still the saxophone. It's my yeah, because I saw in one interview you said uh, the saxophone makes you was making you kind of aggressive or something. No, I wanted to become aggressive. Okay, so I you picked up the trumpet. trumpet. Yeah, the saxophone was. I thought it was too polite. I mean, Nigeria was making me very angry, so I wanted to. <laughs> the <laughs> trumpet looked that. like an Uzi, so I made, I did that instrument and go prrr, kill everybody. Oh, it, it brought the reverse. It made me too cool. So. Mm. Oh, I think it's a good thing. You see, music, like I, I just said now, you think some things are unfortunate, but when you look in retrospect, they are very, it's um, the reverse. So I wanted it to make me aggressive, more angry, to cool me down. Mm -hmm. I think it has made me a better person because now I don't jump into anything. I, I'm, very, I'm a very thoughtful person now. I'm more of a thought. I used to be thoughtful, but now I'm extra thoughtful. And the trumpet, the trumpet brought all those extra things into my life. And I, I like the. After so many years, I've been playing for 20 years now. I like the. At first, I was protesting the feeling, but then I said to glide into the feeling. I think, and I, I'm very comfortable now. Okay, that's nice to hear. Uh, for you, Madi. Said so apart from. Uh, Fellas' music and your dad's music, and also from Afrobeats generally. Are there other genres or other artists that you get inspiration from? I listen to, I found that I listen to almost everything. And I started by listening exclusively to different things at different periods of my life. There's a time I was only listening to Afrobeat, there's a time I was only listening to jazz, there's a time I was listening exclusively like Japanese rock music. And my first few years in London, I was listening exclusively to classical music because I was studying a lot of piano. And then I was, you know, planning to go to Trinity. But what I realized through periods of focused genres is that a few years into my high education, yeah. I started to get inspiration from everywhere. Oh, nice. So no matter the genre, I think the only thing that I tend to avoid is overly commercial music. Mm. Cause not because it's bad, it's because I don't feel like there's anything for me to find. Okay, alright. Uh, the next question is to you, sir, because I feel you're best placed to speak about this. So I just want to ask, what do you think about the situation of things in our country, Nigeria? And as mentioned in several of your songs, like there's obviously a drastic need for change. So what do you think the future for us and also with the elections coming up what do you think we can do differently as a people I don't think we're going to do anything differently <laughs> I don't think there's much to honestly with the elections except we want to follow ourselves the way same politicians same route we are taking but in a nutshell you see it's better to look at it objectively and truthfully when you understand slavery you understand the gravity of what has happened on that continent, bad African governments, the corruption, it's not going to end in my lifetime. It's not going to change in my lifetime. Even if we go into war, it's going to make things more complicated. Uh, so probably two more generations or so before we start to get it right. But you see, when you understand, you see the problem with us is we have not really appreciated that historical fact of slavery, the distortion exploitation, the chaos, the cries of Africa. That was four, four, 400 years. You don't just sweep 400 years under the carpet. You see, as African people, nowhere in our education, in the system, in our daily way of living, have we even reflected that era. Colonization, again, after slavery, colonization, taking our minds away from us, taking, we don't believe in our culture, we don't love our names, we don't like our clothes, our women don't like our hair. We pray, we, we look up to Europe and America. Now we like Asian hair. Everything is so distorted about our lives. You see, and 
are these people that want to progress? The Chinese love themselves. The Japanese love themselves. They still speak their languages. We, we, if you don't speak English very well, you are discarded quickly. If I, if I don't speak good English to you now, every generation is going to laugh at me. My father's generation will laugh at me. My generation will laugh at me. The younger generation will laugh at me. Oh, so you can't speak English? Oh. As if it's such a big deal, you know? The deal should be I can't speak my language. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So we got everything back to front. In a nutshell, that's the problem. And when we understand this simple, basic explanation I've explained, then we start to move on the right yeah. path. And so even I find each individual has that battle to fight. As I still dream in English, I speak, we are speaking English now as African people. <coughs> this is wrong. The Prime Minister of France will not grant an interview in English. And if he does, he's only showing the world that, yes, I can speak this language, but he will not speak uh, English to his people. Yeah. He will leave that post immediately. Not with the Dutch Prime Minister or whoever, what you have, the President here, or the German. Or will the Queen go to America for treatment when she's sick? Look, everything is, there's nothing we have that's going well for us. When we understand that, but um, individually, you see we excel. But when you want to do it collectively, everything that's just seems to break down. What, and it breaks down because the colonial structures are still in place, and those structures are meant to make us fail. There's nothing colonial that is done for us to succeed. The education is for failure. The education that is given to us is oppressive, is colonial, is brainwashing, is wrong. So we can't, we can't succeed. Yeah, it's a sad story. <laughs> Very sad. <laughs> I won't say it's sad. It's just the truth. You see, when you face the truth, yeah. the truth is the truth. Sometimes you correct truth is it. Sad. <laughs> we as that's why we try to correct it with our music. That's why Madi is doing. That's why Fela did what he did. That's why Madi is trained to do what he's doing. That's why I'm trained to do what I am doing. And there are many people still fighting it. So it's not a lost battle. I'm just saying, if you want it to end today, then we are dreaming. You see, they are great fighters, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, my grandmother, my father, Patrice Lumumba, names I can't even mention, names I don't even know that have fought for the emancipation of great people, Muhammad Ali, Bob Marley, I mean, the, the list is endless. If those people didn't enlighten us, probably we would not even care today. So, we just have to keep on striving to make that change. All I'm saying is, if you think it's going to end tomorrow, we are, we are clowning. It's going to take longer than that. Okay. All right, next question uh, for you, Madi. Uh, what's your view on the global, will I say, dominance of Afrobeats, which is deeply rooted in fellas Afrobeats? Like, we see uh, a lot of artists now touring the world. Before, it used to be, yeah, Uncle Femi, Sheon, and yeah, touring. But now we see other Afrobeats artists, the young ones, doing that as well. What do you think? I think it's very good that any form of culture in any country can be appreciated globally. I think any time that happens from any you know, cultural group or any society, is it should be treated as something worthy of praise. It's a very successful endeavor. So that Afrobeats is doing so well today is of course something Nigerians and in Nigerian industry, as much as it's lacking, is something that I should be very proud about. What I will say though is that Nigeria has a responsibility to find balance in musicianship. Where these cats who, are, who have now found their sound have done so really, they've done it by themselves. They've discovered they like music, they've gone to a studio with a producer, they've experimented and experimented for years and years, and now they find new sounds. One guy comes after, picks up a few things, and then tries his hand and stuff. But we need to be able to treat music as something worthy of respect. It's a profession, it takes a lot of work. It's hardcore. So when I was in high school, and I thought I was going to take music seriously, and I wanted to do it in senior secondary school, and I said, music isn't the subject. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people who were artists in my class and we were working with producers. At that time, they were working with Fruity Loops or one thing or the other. And they were telling me, I mean, Madi, I would like to learn guitar, but there's just nowhere for me to do it. So we, if you care and you see an industry that is booming and you see the success it's bringing in globally, then society has a responsibility to treat that profession and 
give it the resources it needs to excel properly. So what we have now is a lot of successful artists, but musicianship is failing. So the average saxophonist doesn't have any route to success in Lagos. He has maybe one to five bands that he can earn a living in. Whereas in any decent country, a saxophonist knows he has a place to buy the sax, to repair the sax, to eventually sell the sax if he decides to give up. And these, it's balanced. He has the, the proper education the educational facilities to learn how to play. If he's a guitarist, he has thousands and thousands of genius around him to be able to experiment with these ideas. Whereas, you know, really in Lagos, if you don't, if you are not on this trend right now, which is a very successful trend, the reality is that there's really no route, unless you are overprivileged like me. And people will say, okay, so your father played sax and you're playing sax now. The chances of you listening to another saxophonist in Lagos is very unlikely. And it's not because people don't like saxophones and how they sound, or guitars or drums, it's because we don't treat it seriously. And the, the way education is now catered in Nigeria is academia 100%. If you don't, you learn about things that you never put them into practice. And all of us, we go through it for six years. I never had it to my dad. In fact, I tried endlessly to leave school. But he made sure I finished, but I tried so hard. I come back and say, man, every day. I had no idea what I just did today. All I know is I wore a tie under 35 degree weather with no air conditioning, prayed in the morning and sang. And then from then on, nothing. I'm just taking all this information and I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. So I was, and if you have an entire, you have generations after generations going through that same system, then you walk outside in Lagos and nothing is working. It's not hard to figure out. If if you don't treat children and give them opportunities to do the things that they love and then cater to those needs, the society cannot excel because it's the people that make that country. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm happy that the Afrobeats is excelling as it is, but musicianship should not suffer at the hands of commercial success. And there has to be balance in arts and culture. We have to be able to give people opportunity. So the radios have to play different kinds of music. Venues have to listen to different kinds of musicians and give them opportunities to perform at low rates because they can't afford it otherwise. Yeah. Thanks for the elaborate answer. Yeah, that's uh, really, really, really makes sense. Yeah. 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 I simplified it. <laughs> okay, so uh, to the next, next answer is going to be so long. Yeah. <laughs> it be so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next question is about your energy level on stage. I feel it's every time I, I watch you perform, it's like it's new. I'm, I'm still surprised because some of the young guys, you see, they just jump on stage for 10, 20 minutes and that's it. But you're going for hours at the same level. How do you manage to keep it up at this age? How do you manage? Yeah. Maybe if I knew I would stop. It led me to be curious. <laughs> Let it be. I don't know. <laughs> no, you don't. I don't think about it. I just get on stage and do what I have to do. And I've been doing that all my life. I fear that I might I might not be able to do it one day. But until then, I think I'll probably deal with it when it comes. When that time I'm closing sixty now. You're closing. Uh, it's yes, next door. <laughs> yeah, close it now. Yeah, don't say like that. It's two months away. <laughs> I'm closer to 16 now. Yeah, yeah. So you are 60. I'm not. Don't push me further than I'm taking my time. Every day counts. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll start your, your energy level is something I've never seen it before. And I definitely can't maintain my energy for that. No, he waiting. plays If he plays five shows in a row, yeah. it's the same. Level of consistency yeah. all the way through. And me, but I'm not using that same energy. I'm already falling asleep for the third of the show. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. Well, it, well, it tells on my body. I mean, a lot of pain sometimes, but it's, I don't know. But you, but you're still fit because so many times we see you working out on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, doing some push-ups and well, all that. Yeah. yeah, not as much as I used to do. But uh, you maintain a healthy lifestyle. I try to. Okay, so maybe next question. Yeah, we, we have just uh, two more questions. Ah! Actually. Yeah, yes, so sir. first one for you, Madi. Yes, as uh, 
what's that one thing about your dad that you really admire and you wish to emulate? Oh, man. Just one thing. One. There's so many. But if I had to pick one above everything else, it would be integrity. Mm -hmm. To be able to say what you mean all the time to everybody that you meet and maintain the things you say in your own lifestyle and how you raise your children. Nice. Uh, the last one is a general question any of you could answer. So I just want to know which I city... I won't let him answer because you take to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's leave ourselves first. first. <laughs> <laughs> so on this tour so far, which city has shown the most energy? Like, that you really felt like, yeah, this was a nice show? Really in France, man. Uh, yeah. Well, you can't really compare, you know. It's very hard to... Every venue is very different. Yeah, the, that's set, true. the setting is different. Some venues, it's like a theater. You see, as professionals, you have to deal with each day, each night, as it's like taking an exam. This hall is very different in Amsterdam. We've been here before, but we are older, we are more mature, so it's, going to, it's not going to be like we saw us two years ago. It's going to be different. Mm -hmm. And those who have followed us will notice, wow, this band is getting better because we have been together. Now we know how to deal. The way we are going to deal with tonight is very different from how we dealt with it two years ago. The way we are going to deal with tonight is different from the way we dealt uh, with the last gig two years ago, um, two day, nights ago. Every night you have to be able to understand this, the town, the city, the people, the venue, the sound. These are all things that you can't, you only, it's years of experience. And because many of us are veterans in touring, we know if somebody just joins the band, he quickly acclimatizes to understand, hey, tonight is going to be very quiet. We are gliding tonight. So, okay, today is hard core music. Okay, this is time to do this, time to do. We all know. It's just one look at each other. Everybody knows what to do, when to do, whatever to do. If there's a mistake, the audience will not even know. Yeah. So, and because of this format of knowing how to do it, you can't say because it's a sitting audience and the other was a dance hall that this is better. Very different, it's like night and day. Because if you, if you treat a theater like a rock and roll venue, you will fail. If you just go and do bar, because those, it's like they're coming to watch a movie. They're coming to watch you and you have to understand that Okay, they want to sit down there like investigating. There's so much going into their mind that if you don't understand this, you will give, you will deliver a very bad concert. As likewise, when people are coming with all this energy to come and watch you, and then you treat them like a theater, of course you are going to deliver a very bad concert because they say, "Wow, I didn't come here to sleep." <laughs> so you have to understand venue. So it's not yeah. like. Um, the question was, which was your favorite? And I'm telling you that it's not possible to have a favorite. <laughs> you just said that. No! <laughs> was it not educative? What yeah, it is. I now, learned a lot any already. Any upcoming artist now will understand that, oh, when it might, and you, you know because you are in the, you are in the storm right now, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, so you can't, you can't pick. <laughs> yeah. You are a very... In very short, very in short, you can't pick. Okay. <laughs> You yes. see, if it was the Europe, I would do Africanism, I would give you a knock on it. You do the same thing in Europe, but you see, it's yeah. cause there's I can just do Oscar for you and give you a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar. Oh, Oscars. Oh, Bianca, me too. I will give you, no, I'll first give you Bianca, but then give you Oscar. Oh, oh Bianca was back at No, I'm no, just saying, oh, because it's two slaps we have seen now, two major slaps in the world. Bianca and Oscar. <laughs> So you will reset yourself immediately. <laughs> nice. Yeah, uh, that will, that's the end for the question. So the next is just the, the game. So I'm going to ask uh, three questions each. So when I ask the question to Made, the user would write the answer. And then after he says the answer, then you display what he wrote down. All right. Okay. Yeah. So, and then we'll do it the other way around. I didn't go to school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you Please, yeah, don't spy, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so the first question, where did mom and dad first meet? Where did we first meet? Yeah. Ah, My mom and dad or his mom and dad? No, your mom and him. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> so if you were to guess. 
That's in case you need luck. You need luck. Okay, sir. Can you show us the answer? At a kick. At my kick. That's my kick. I'm playing jazz. Ah, she did say that. That was where she fell for you, sure. Okay. Like she saw you playing. Yeah, you know, so I was kind of playing jazz. At, I used to play jazz with my friends. Yeah, so okay. that's she came to work to shoot. All right. The yeah. next one. Um, what is Dad's favorite color? See, you say he doesn't have a favorite color, but what he told me was navy blue. That's what he said. If he has changed it, I'm not, I don't know about it. Navy blue, okay, you got it. Navy blue, yeah, you got it. <laughs> nice. Okay, the last one. I don't care why. Where is Dad's favorite holiday destination? She doesn't take holidays. Okay, but if he had to go somewhere, it would be Paris. Paris. Let's Don't see. change it to <laughs> Paris that you know you like going to. <laughs> what sentence are you writing? <laughs> okay. Paris, yeah. Paris. What was this? Never taking a holiday. Oh, okay. you guys see that. Yeah. Yeah, you see. He has the same handwriting as well. <laughs> I don't want to write. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now you can give it to okay. Made. Yeah. If you if you answer, so I will beat you for every one I miss. <laughs> you will go to the side. Yeah, okay. you can use the other side. Yeah. Okay. So the first one. What was Made's favorite subject in secondary school? Favorite subject. Yes. In secondary school. Secondary school, not uh, uni. I did have a favorite subject. Yeah, my favorite subject. I said, I said, yeah, I did. But this is your soul. You didn't like school. You didn't like school. You didn't have a favorite subject. All right, we'll, we'll go to the next one then. Thank you. What is Made's favorite Nigerian dish? Ah, I would say on the yam and you see, baby. Right, you got it right. Nice. Okay. Last one. What is Made's favorite sports team? Sports team. <laughs> yeah. He's, I will Barcelona, but I will say now he is not into all that anymore. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Barcelona just for FIFA, but I don't watch or support anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, Barcelona right. is a team that is a cheat enough. <laughs> to match how good I play. Okay. Okay. Cool. So he doesn't watch football. We, we, we are not. He's uh, a Nigerian player, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just like a good match. We like a good match. So mm -hmm. if we watch a good match, we we'll so watch it regardless of who wins. Right. And if it's a bad match, then we we'll change the Sharp. And to end it all, I would like prefer that we loved our own national, our own team. If there was a Alagule FC, I would be the number one supporter. Yeah. Okay, See, because mm -hmm. we grew up loving stationary stores, ICC, Bendel Insurance. Who is me? <laughs> you grew up. My generation. <laughs> we used to go to the stadium to watch them. And then suddenly, we are all looking outside our home, into 6,000 miles away from us, I supporting swear. teams that don't even care about us. I wish I experienced that. I wish I experienced I watching. It was really good going to the stadium. But then suddenly, they killed everything. <laughs> I killed everything. Yeah, last one. If you guys can just sign the. Can we have the Yeah, sure. Sign face. Sign face. with you. Sign face. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. What did you do? <laughs> oh. Your signature is as long as your answer. This is my signature. <laughs> That's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. If she asks you, you can just hold it up. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I like this album. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the cover is it was sick. very. It was very. Uh, in the sun. I mean, it was very. Yeah. See my gray. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank okay. You. Go, go, come on now.